And this is one of the headlines I pulled up. It says Shama Sawant sponsoring rent control, trigger law in Seattle. And you mentioned that the voting is on Tuesday. Uh, is there any other information that people can know to how they how they can help uh, raise awareness? Uh, is there anything else that we should know about this? Because I, I think housing, especially in, in the United States where millions are going homeless, and then the people who are not homeless have outrageous rent. I pay outrageous rent. So, uh, yeah, uh, Shama, I, I just went through a whole... Yeah, I just went through a whole housing thing. Nick went through a whole housing thing. So, Shama, can you kind of lay the groundwork for, like, what happened to precipitate to even be being yeah. here to where you're having this rent control issue go on? Uh, if you could speak to that, go ahead. Yeah, I mean, Seattle is hardly unique. We're seeing this crisis nationally. We've been talking about it for the last hour, uh, and in Seattle, we have seen one example of that where. For one, the most startling statistic really is the rents in Seattle between 2010 and 2020 almost doubled. This is absolutely stunning. That's crazy. And yeah, that's completely crazy. And 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 it, you can see this playing in uh, people's real lives. And that that still you have is from the public hearing I held. I I chair the Renters Rights Committee, Sustainability and Renters Rights Committee on the Seattle City Council. And the mm -hmm. uh, city Democrats, they hate that I'm, I, you know, the, the, the law gives me the right to uh, organize these committee meetings in the way I want to, the way I think will benefit working people. So most uh, meetings are in city hall chambers in the middle of the day. We held this public hearing uh, in Capitol Hill in the community at 6 p.m. And so we had 150 people there just absolutely just really explaining the dire need for rent control. And obviously we're, you know, we already, I already mentioned how people are literally in the pipeline from unstable housing to homelessness to dying while, while you're unsheltered. Um, in addition to that, we also have a whole section of community. CJ and Nick, you mentioned yourselves in this situation where you may not be facing homelessness in any uh, immediate way, but the housing instability you face, having to move multiple times a year. Right. There are so many young people who uh, they they cannot uh, afford a place of their own unless you're willing to live in a micro apartment with no kitchen, no uh, bathroom of your own. And so most young people I know actually they live in group houses. And so, and many of them move multiple times a year. So this it's a very, very difficult situation. And majority of Seattle is now renting and majority of them support rent control. In fact, you know what? A very important poll was done in 2020 after the pandemic happened uh, where Washington statewide, 71% of Washington state likely voters support rent control. So that's how much the crisis is developed statewide. So, you know, in other regions, it may not be as acute as Seattle, but relative to what it was, it is a major housing affordability crisis. And in fact, uh, if you look at, so, so already statewide, there is support for it. And also, if you look at how the crisis affects people, obviously working class people are affected, low income people are affected the most. But even within that, if you look at how it affects low income and poor people of color, communities of color, it is just, uh, it is just gut wrenching. And in fact, uh, the Seattle Times, which is the editorial board is in no, I mean, it's very much uh, with the Chamber of Commerce and with corporate landlords, but even one of their articles said uh, in 2020, this is a quote, in fast gentrifying Seattle, where there is no type of rent control, renters are vulnerable to steep increases in their monthly payments when the lease is up. Yeah. So they're not actually advocating for rent control, but they're noting, which is a lot for them to say, that because of the absence of rent control this is happening. So what's the context? In Washington state, 42 years ago, the Democrats and Republicans at that time, you know, most of the people who are watching this are probably haven't been alive for 42 years. 42 years ago, the Democrats and Republicans, they uh, came together on behalf of corporate landlords in response to a campaign for rent control at that time in Seattle, mm. in 1979. They instituted a ban statewide on any municipalities passing their own rent control. Mm -hmm. And for 42 years, the Democratic establishment has presided over this ban. And one of the uh, insidious tactics that they have used all along uh, is uh, the city Democrats, Seattle city Democrats giving cover to the state Democrats and the state Democrats giving Seattle city Democrats cover. So, you know, they, and so one of the clarifying points we have made is 
this is one party. It's your party. And whether you're a Seattle Democrat or a Democrat in Olympia, which is the capital of Washington state, you are, you are in a party that has, uh, that, that has ties to corporate landlords and the ban on rent control is not a neutral act. It is in favor of landlords, corporate landlords. And this is also, you know, an additional, if, as if this didn't make a power overpowering case for rent control. Now we know the ProPublica investigation, which shows that most corporate landlords are actually subscribers or clients of this corporation called RealPage, which, is, which has an algorithm which allows um, uh, corporate landlords to wantonly raise their rates because it eliminates what they call the human factor where so so la lawsuits are alleging that uh, corporate corporate landlords have engaged in price fixing and mm -hmm. that is mm -hmm. a big component of the insane rent increases so it's in this context that we have proposed my office socialist alternative workers strike back we have proposed a strong citywide rent control as you as you've shown yeah it covers every rental home no no loopholes which uh, allow rent rent controlled units to then go back to market rate. So wow. we have no, no, no such uh, loopholes, but it's a trigger law, which means that it it, it 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 will go into effect the moment the state ban is lifted. So it can't go into effect. But mm -hmm. why are we doing this? Because you, it's the same reason that we want Cornell West uh, campaign to succeed is because we are done waiting for the Democratic Party to act. What they have done is side with corporate landlords in a very open way by upholding that ban. So what we need is to win this because we know that if we can win this, it will provide giant historic momentum to take our movement to Olympia, to repeal that ban, and then actually make this law take effect. But what are the obstacles here? Uh, this is, um, we have, obviously there are conservative Democrats who are openly conservative Democrats, three of them, who, four of them, sorry, who are not going to support this. There are automatic no votes unless there's a real movement that forces them to pay a political price but you also have progressive democrats who are the you know self-described progressive democrats plus my vote we are the majority of the council but they themselves are not supporting it in my committee one democrat voted yes with me on this legislation and andrew lewis who is a self-described progressive and labor democrat who's up for re-election in fact tuesday night is election night i believe primary night he voted against this legislation. There is uh, a another progressive. She just took a leave of absence. She says she's not going to show up on Tuesday. This is the situation we are in. So we need powerful solidarity. So anybody who's watching this, if you can, uh, if you are in Seattle, if you and you can show up, you, we need you here in City Hall chambers on Tuesday at 2 p.m. Seattle time. And I also want to put a call out to the Kansas City Tenants Union, you know, if anybody from the KC Tenants Union is watching this, we need you to stand with us too, because if we can win here, we can win nationwide. Yeah, and that, and KC Tenants accurately calls out what they call the ethnic cleansing of, of black and brown people in Kansas City. And you mentioned uh, during your spill that there's rent, uh, the rent increases impact black and brown and disenfranchised people. And I don't know a lot of people know this, but Kansas City uh, has some of the highest po uh, percentage of black people, three times more than the nation average, they're, they're around 33%. But the black population has decreased significantly because uh, mm -hmm. Quentin Lucas and Democrats in our area has been, uh, they've been, they sold out to real estate developers and landlords. And these are the people that KC tenants have been fighting. They, they have been raising rents, especially in poor and disenfranchised communities that they know they're not going to fight back, which led to many black people who lived here for generations had to be displaced, which uh, is the quote of ethnic cleansing. There were a lot of black people that were forced to leave because of the cost of living. Not only black people, obviously, but that is the, that is what impact, uh, that is the gentrification, that is the ethnic cleansing. Mm -hmm. and drive people out of their homes. And that's why Casey Tennant drive that point on. And that's why this is such, such an important issue to tackle. I want to get Joe Stein in for any thoughts uh, regarding the housing issue and how we can fight back against it. Oh, you know, as, as Shama is talking, I'm thinking we have to put out a press release about this and Cornell needs to take a stand on it. And um, that'd be great. Shama, we can be in touch afterwards about how to make this happen. As please, please do be asking like before. Yes. Uh, well, today's Thursday and the vote is on Tuesday. So, you know, let's get this out tomorrow is, is like what I'd like to happen. 
And, you know, this is it because like, like Sean was saying, this is not just Seattle, this is America, you know, this is what it looks like. This is not the exception, this is the rule. This is what's happening all over the place and we really need a unified fight back. And, you know, I just uh, thank our lucky stars that we have a candidate here who is um, not shy and, mm -hmm. you know, knows no bounds. I mean, he doesn't think what he's doing is courageous. You know, he thinks what he's doing is just what he's supposed to do, you know, in the in the uh, tradition of black uh, prophetic power and and, you know, name it. He'll do it. And um we need to move so maybe that's yeah. the good part. That's the good part of him not having any political sort of background. Oh yeah, is that he views yeah. it? He views it this way. So and that could be a great thing. Yeah. But I'm loving having this conversation, and and now it's it's resulting in Dr. Cornell West possibly reaching out and helping out with this yeah, rent control thing. Oh yeah, this is this oh, is but this is what we yeah. This is what we should be doing. Like this is such. Oh, yeah the return on something like this is such more better. You have such a better yeah. chance than like donating to the democratic party. So for those oh, yeah. that are watching, right. this is what you want to be doing, but go ahead. It looks like you were going to chime in again, uh, Dr. Stein. Yeah. You know, I was just going to say that this is what our kind of advisor teams are about. And I would love to talk to Shama about that, about, you know, really solidifying oh, that yeah. relationship so that you can give us, the heads up when stuff is happening in this sector that needs a um, a shot in the arm and that needs publicity and you know and that needs support and I would you know I would love to be in touch with you about not only this moment on Tuesday but all the moments you know following in in the year and a half ahead. Uh, absolutely, Jill. Yeah, we should definitely be in touch. Yeah, yeah. Let's let's uh, let's connect offline, and this is exactly what we need to be doing where we are uh, connecting the various struggles and having Cornell West and the campaign of Dr. West and uh, Jill Stein, you know, all of you running this campaign. I think having that be sort of the, the, um, the, the, the sort of the, um, the force that brings a lot of these struggles together, exactly. helping, helping to connect in people's minds also why they should be supporting this, even if it's happening in Seattle, as you said, oh, yeah. uh, it, it has national implications. Uh, explaining all of that, I think, yeah, Cornell West just, and, and also I just want to say, as you were saying, uh, Jill earlier, the, just the 24 seven seriousness that he has shown where he's just, just tirelessly going everywhere. I think that is exactly what will benefit all the ongoing movements. Yes. Yes. In, yeah. in what way can you speak to that? Uh, Cause I'm in what way, how does, how does his, him doing that uh, benefit in, in from your perspective, how would it benefit? I should say it, it it benefits in a very specific way in the sense that every time you speak and and uh, and I'm sure Jill, Doctor Stein, you 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 will relate to this as well yourself, is when when you are playing a visible leadership role like as as Jill Stein was as candidate as Cornell West is doing now. Um, and through uh, you know our experience uh, in having this position in Seattle, launching Worker Strike Back, sometimes you feel to yourself like a broken record. You feel like, well, I've said this a number of times. I, I, you know, why am I saying this again? But every time you say it, I, I, I've always uh, told other people who are playing a public role that every time you speak, imagine that there is somebody listening to you who's not heard you before. So what would you say then? And that is what I mean when Bernie had such a huge impact not, I mean, obviously, the start, his starting point of having a very strong program of demands was important. He's, you know, in that sense, it was very genuine. Uh, but then also uh, hitting his stump speech everywhere he went was important because if people don't know what the campaign is about, then what they have on offer, as you guys were talking earlier, CJ and Nick, is the garbage from the yes. mainstream media about, oh, he's a spoiler, he's a spoiler, he's a spoiler, he's a spoiler. You know, so... Uh, that's that so that's the alternative so uh, so just going everywhere he can yeah. and really hitting his points is crucial in fact it's i should also mention it's very important i mean he's he's going on all the left broadcasts that's very important but he's also not shying away from going on fox on cnn 
on every mainstream mm-hmm. and corporate media show. It is important for him to go because there are ordinary and genuine people watching these shows. You know, every time you, if you as a leftist, you feel I shouldn't go on Fox News, don't forget there are probably Teamster UPS drivers who are listening to the show just because they're driving mm-hmm. hours and hours and they're listening to something, you know? And so there are going to be genuine people, no matter where you go, which show you go on, who are listening to you. And that's your audience. Anderson Cooper is not your audience. The people who yes. are watching CNN is your audience. And they need to know what you stand for. And there's another thing, component, um, uh, in answer to your question, CJ, is that mm-hmm. it is important for working people to see leaders on the left uh, being staying on the offensive and not going on the defense. You know, it, what's in, one, one thing that's been important about Cornel West's media appearances is that he's never backed away from his positions like they try to bait him they have tried to pay, portray him as a putin lover he has never backed away from his anti-war position imagine how incredibly important that is without the cornell west campaign who is the anti-war candidate who claims the anti-war mantle right. it's donald trump you know right. this is so dangerous for the working class to not have in the absence of a Cornell West campaign, to not have a genuine left anti-war candidate, that's damaging to the to the genuine issue of being anti-war and anti-imperialism. You know, so not not allowing Donald Trump to grab the mantle of an anti-war candidate mm-hmm. and pushing back and never going on the defensive on those points, all of that is important for working people to see. Not only for for them to see that somebody who believes in what I believe is out there and I'm not alone, but also to feel empowered when somebody on the left, uh, you know, it refuses to back down and goes and stays on the offensive. That empowers the people who are watching them because they they recognize that's how we need to fight back. 